Hey guys, today's an exciting one. We have the 2023 Acura Integra. This is the A-Spec with the technology package. It's the top trim. It comes in just shy of $37,000. And this is also the only trim where you can get the six-speed manual transmission. There's an A-Spec package that comes in just under thirty-four dollars and then the base Integra, which is just under $32,000, including destination. Those both come in CVTs. We have the 1.5 liter turbocharged four cylinder that makes 200 horsepower and in manual form, you get a helical limited slip front differential. We have a lot of similarities to the Civic Si, very similar steering wheel, some interior switch gear, same drivetrain. Uh, the underlying chassis is the same, but this Integra doesn't share any body panels with the Civic Si. It has its own unique body structure and design. Um, it's a little bit wider, a little bit longer, and that is to make room for a lift back design, which we will show you here in a minute. Let's walk you around this new Integra, show you what it looks like inside and out. We're here in Austin, Texas. We've got some pretty nice looking back roads on our drive route today, so we'll be able to check this around a little bit, show you what it looks like, show you how it handles and uh, any differences with between this and the Civic Si uh, from a performance and driving perspective. The highlight here with this new Integra, or one of the highlights, is you get a bunch of different drive modes, sport, normal, comfort, uh, but you get this individual mode where you can customize individual settings like your steering, your engine, your suspension. Oh yeah, we have adaptive dampers in this Integra and uh, the option for a heated steering wheel, though this car isn't fitted with that. But you can, you can set your suspension to comfort, normal, or sport. You can turn off your idle stop start or change your gauge cluster display in your individual mode. I quite like sport because it makes it red. Fully digital gauge cluster, very similar to the Civics. Uh, you can customize windows and views that you get on your right screen and your left screen. I just have it set to fuel economy, that's fine. We also get a head-up display that will show us navigation directions, cruise control information, speed limits, that's very cool. Traction control off button is here to the left, that turns everything off. Before we take a look at the exterior, I just wanna say I really do like what Acura has done with this interior space. We have a lot of accents and treatments here that I've seen in a lot of other Acura models, and it really kind of brings this Integra into the more premium space. We also have the 16-speaker ELS Studio 3D Premium Surround Sound System. We'll test that later. It absolutely bumps. It's a phenomenal sound system. We've got our sound test playlist uh, queued up and ready to go. Um, all right, before we do that, though, let's walk you around this Integra, show you what it looks like on the outside. This is painted in, I believe, liquid carbon gray. This is a really nice color, kind of dark, very metallic. Paired with the red interior, I think it looks super sharp. I will say Acura does a phenomenal job with their paintwork. The blue, the red, the white, all those colors look really nice on this new Integra. We have our Integra logo embossed in the front and rear bumpers, just like the original. A very corporate, modern Acura looking front end. This new grill, which is frameless, integrates the Acura logo nicely. I think it looks pretty good. When this Integra first launched, there was a collective sigh among a lot of enthusiasts at this, just kind of looking at the styling. Maybe it was the color of the launch vehicle. Maybe it was the Integra logo at the bottom. Um, there were all these renderings that were out there floating around that were fake. They weren't based on any reality, any real design uh, renderings from Acura. And it showed this really sexy two-door coupe. And honestly, the Integra was always kind of meant to be a Civic-based four-door liftback. That's how it was originally. Uh, we'll probably see a Type S at some point too, but the two-door coupe renderings were just, I think that added to some of the disappointment when this car launched. In the flesh, this car I think looks really good. Maybe the rear end design isn't as cohesive as it could be with the front. I really like the way this backside looks though. The lights look awesome. The taillights match the front. We have a slightly uh, different exhaust note too from this Integra compared to the Civic Si. On these 18-inch wheels, looks pretty good too. There's a bunch of factory accessories that you can order for this Integra. 19-inch alloys is an option. You can get these 18s with either these Continental All Seasons or a set of summer tires. These are 23540R18s. The base Integra comes on a set of 17-inch alloy wheels. Let's take a look back here because this is really one of the uh, big selling points of the Integra. You get a ton of cargo space back here. 
You could probably fit a spare tire in as an optional extra after the fact. There is a pretty big well down there, but it's taken up with this foam piece right now. You can fold down these rear seats right there. 60-40 folding and just a ton of room back here. It's pretty amazing. Acura has the option for a roof rack accessory, a bunch of exterior options like carbon fiber mirror caps. Back seats are pretty spacious. The only place where it leaves a little bit to be desired is headroom. I'm five foot 10, seated behind myself. I have a ton of legroom in this Integra. You can see at the top of the roof, there is a little bit of a bubble to make for some more headroom. But if you lean back, your head's gonna probably touch the roof unless if you're um, a little bit shorter than I am. Up front, just a really nice, sharp looking interior. I think Acura did a really nice job separating and differentiating this new Integra from the Civic Si. If you were complaining that the US spec Si didn't quite get all the options that they do in Canada, well, this might be your answer. It's very luxurious in here. It's a little bit quieter on the inside than the Civic Si. And uh, I think it's a very nice, premium, sporty sedan, liftback, whatever you want to call it. All right, let's pop the hood, take a look under the engine. This 1.5 liter turbocharged four cylinder makes 200 horsepower. It looks like an engine. It's super efficient. You should expect mid to high 30s in this car. I don't have any exact weight estimates yet on this new Integra, but I believe in manual transmission form, this is only around 100 pounds heavier than the Civic Si. So you don't really get that much of a performance decrease with all the extra luxury features and extra size of this Integra which I think is a good thing. Again, don't quote me on that number, but I believe that's around the ballpark. Okay, so that's what it looks like inside and out. Let's take this thing for a drive. There is a lot to talk about with the driving experience. The Civic Si, I think, is one of the best enthusiast options on the market today. And this Integra is maybe for the more mature, discerning buyer with a little bit more of a budget. Um, it's not as quick, not as, ferocious as the SI to drive, but it's still a very nice driving experience. This manual, this six-speed manual, is just a fantastic gearbox. Here's what the reverse camera looks like. Passenger mirror folds down to show you uh, your curb, which is very cool. All right, we're going to start off in normal mode, and we will make our way to our twisty back road. This new Integra has a variable steering ratio, so it's a little bit tighter lock to lock at lower speeds and then at higher speeds that ratio decreases. feels very familiar, very similar to the Civic Si. I feel like we have a little bit less rev hang too. It only seems to present itself around 5,000 RPM. Below that, revs drop pretty progressively. Nicely matched with the timing to do shifts with the six-speed manual. Rev matching seems to be a little bit more precise than the Civic Si's too kept the active rev match system on today and uh, kind of do the occasional heel toe downshift on my own just to kind of entertain myself but for the most part I've left the system on and I, I kind of like it. You can go into the infotainment and turn it off. I do wish that was a quick button press. They've added all of these individual drive mode settings and if you could turn on and off rev matching in that that would just be fantastic. That would that would be the ticket. At low speeds, this is a very comfortable car to drive. Clutch is light. Shifter is just so nice, so sweet, so notchy. I love the shift knob on this Integra. Ride quality is excellent too. We're on some pretty smooth roads today. I can sense a subtle difference in suspension tuning between normal comfort and sport. But again, we'll have to kind of wait and get back into Michigan on our super bumpy potholed roads to really test these adaptive dampers. Let's talk drive modes. In sport mode, that will stiffen up the suspension, it'll stiffen up the steering, 
throttle response will be increased. There's quite a bit of response on throttle tip and in sport mode and even some in normal mode. This definitely doesn't pull as hard at Redline as the Civic Si. You can feel the extra weight in this Integra. But that limited slip diff does do a really nice job getting around corners. A little bit more sound isolation, a little bit less road engine noise, NVH in this Integra compared to the Civic Si. It's a little bit quieter, which is nice. Oh yes. And this is an engine that loves to rev. We're in our most aggressive setting now and it's still pretty quiet. You get minimal active sound coming through the speakers. Still make some VTEC noises though at Redline. speed wind noise is vastly reduced compared to the Civics. I really appreciate that. Front end feels nice and sharp. There's a little bit more rotation from the rear. Maybe it's these all-season tires. Maybe it's the extra weight from the rear end with that overhang from the lift back. But this feels like a little bit more of a tail-happy car compared to the Civic Si. Love the brake pedal feel. Nice and firm, great bite from these pads. Yeah, you can hustle this car. It is fun to drive. Such a great front wheel drive chassis. You don't need a rear wheel drive or all wheel drive to have fun. Let's go into individual mode. Again, I've set my engine to comfort, so we get a little bit less engine noise. It's more of a natural tone. Throttle response is a lot more linear. Suspension is in comfort as well. It still feels pretty good on this back road. Let's do a quick zero to 60 here put it back into sport mode. Traction off. It's not quick, so you definitely lose a little bit of performance with this Integra with the extra weight, but it's fun to drive. It's satisfying. All of my inputs really kind of speak to me as a driving enthusiast and as a driver. It's a car that you can push. You know, it's a little bit slow car fast, which I appreciate. Um, if you want something with more power, there are some other options out there. But still, in this manual transmission form, it's the right formula. You get a limited slip differential, puts the power down wonderfully. The shifter feels fantastic. It's an engine that encourages you to rev it out. And when you do, you get some decent performance from it. And I gotta say, this chassis is very nice too. It's a little bit softer, a little bit more body roll than the Civic Si, not as buttoned down, not as tight, but it rides better, it's more comfortable. The Civic Si is on the verge of being a little on the stiff side. Again, I think they've done a nice job kind of isolating this Integra from the Civic its Civic counterparts. Um, this is a more luxurious, comfortable, premium, compact liftback. The extra space here provides a little bit more practicality and usability. If you're looking at an SUV and you need that massive cargo space behind the driver, well, this is the answer. I mean, yeah, you don't get all-wheel drive, you don't get the ground clearance, but something like this really 
is great value in the market and with all the luxury features and options that you get in this new Integra. It comes out in early June, so only another week or so after this video drops. So uh, yeah, a uh, lot to be excited here with this new Integra. I think if you want one of these, you should try to get your hands on one. For 37 grand, it's pricey, but I think with everything you get, it's probably worth it. I know uh, Honda dealers are putting markups on Civic SIs for more than 37 grand. So if you can get one for that price, I think it's, uh, it's a worthy option in the market. Uh, we will probably see an Integra Type S down the road at some point, but for now, this kind of scratches the itch. It's a great performance daily driver. Um, let's test out this ELS Studio 3D sound system. Let's walk around this one more time, show you what it looks like, and uh, then we'll do our sound system test and wrap up with some final thoughts. I also want to drive that road again. Okay, so one thing about Acura is they have always had amazing premium audio. ELS, the Studio 3D systems in their cars are really class leading, really top notch, some of the best in-car audio that I've heard in any vehicle, any price point. So um, this new ELS in this Integra is definitely class leading, I would say. Uh, definitely a big step up over the Bose system in the Civic Si, which that on its own is class leading in my opinion. So let's have a listen. We'll go for a little bit more of a drive here. And uh, all right, off we go. What a great sound system too. It's just, it's so clear. The bass is so crisp and clean and just nice. They really get it right. Acura really gets it right with in-car audio with, with ELS. Ah, I just keep listening. I'm loving this.
Everything is leveled out on the sound system. Just phenomenal in-car audio. All right, let's put us back into individual. I'm gonna change my suspension tuning from comfort to normal, and uh, I'm gonna leave everything else where it was. I like that. I like those settings. So, I've only spent a couple hours in this car, but so far, highlights are. All the features you get here uh, are phenomenal. You get the option for a heated steering wheel, you get heated seats. The EOS Studio 3D sound system is a real highlight. Being able to get this quality of in-car audio in a vehicle under 40 grand is mind-boggling to me. And the rest of this is just a really nice driver's car. It's a little bit softer than the Civic Si, not as hard-edged. Uh, it's a little bit heavier, not as fast. I like the ride quality. It's a little bit com more comfortable, that longer, a uh, wider stance to this car definitely puts a little bit more weight over the suspension and the inherent long wheelbase of this chassis helps with that quite a bit too. I have nice visibility, a pretty thin A-pillar. All around me I can see well. I like the shape of these mirrors too. Acura hasn't gone overboard with the active sound tuning either in this Integra. It's, it's pretty toned down, pretty muted. This is also an incredibly safe vehicle to drive, too. Honda and Acura have amazing airbag technology for the passenger and the driver. It reduces head injuries, all sorts of other things. That's an important consideration in a daily driver and uh, in an enthusiast car, I think. All right, while we're just cruising here, let's test out cruise control. So we have an adaptive cruise control system can easily change our following distance right here on the steering wheel. A very familiar looking button layout. There's also the option to have steering assist and enable that. It works really well. A little bit of an improvement over the Civic Si's Honda sensing system. Acura's done a really nice job with this. It keeps you very well centered between the lines. You can skip five mile an hour increments pretty easily by holding up on this uh, plus switch here. It seems to keep a pretty close distance from the vehicle ahead of you. The steering assist does a great job keeping you centered between the lines. You can easily turn that on and off with the press of a button. You can hear here 65 miles an hour, just how little wind and road and NVH there is in this car. A lot quieter. I don't think these Continental All Seasons have as much grip as the All Seasons on the Civic Si. They're a little bit more squirmy, a little bit more squealy, but uh, they don't have as much road noise, which is a really nice improvement. Okay, guys, well, those are going to be some initial thoughts on this new Integra. I think we're going to wrap things up there. Hopefully this has been an informative video, and it's given you guys an idea of what this thing is like to drive, what it's like to live with, some of the updates that Acura has done here, and changes that they've made compared to the Civic Si. I mean, that's really the most natural comparison here between these two cars. Uh, there's a lot to like about this new Integra. This is a great option in the premium compact space. This car kind of does it all. It's kind of the perfect daily driver formula. Only thing I would be wanting for is a little bit more power and performance, but hold out for a little bit longer if that's the case. If that's how you feel, I'm sure there will be a Type S launched within the next year or so, or sometime after the new Civic Type R comes out. That could be a very, very compelling package. Of course, it's going to be more expensive, so something to factor in as well. That said, though, this is a phenomenal car. Excited to spend some more time with it back in Michigan uh, outside of this press launch. But, yeah, anyway, let me know if you guys have any questions in the comments. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next video. Take care.